Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be covering some topics related to object detection. Now recently I've been working on a World of Warcraft bot, so if you've been following along with my channel, you've probably been following along with making that bot, that's awesome. If you're new here, don't worry, today's video is not specifically part of that project, but it's kind of an overall look, because the purpose of this channel is not just to create a bot for World of Warcraft, I just happen to be doing that now. The purpose is to really look at artificial intelligence, AI as a whole, and we'll be doing lots of projects other than World of Warcraft. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, consider liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. So today's video, I want to I want to talk about some different types of object detection that I've used in the past and kind of talk really high level about them so that you'll see, you know, because uh, because a lot of people say, well, how are we going to detect objects? And in your mind, you have this uh, you know, image from the, like, the Terminator movie where there's like this computer like reticle looking and it's like beep, 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 oh, found the target acquired, right? But that's not always how we want to do stuff. So let's let's take a look. I'm going to go to my notepad here and I'm going to and I'm going to jump back to the video and I'm going to show you examples of where I've employed each of those because we've already employed a couple of them in our video so far. So we really have a couple different objects. We have, uh, oops, let me do a red pen so it stands out a little bit more. So we have a couple of different ways. One way is we can use pixels. Okay, and what I mean by pixels is we have a screen and we know exactly where something is all the time. And the example that we've done so far is our health bar. So again, this is this might not appear very uh, you know sexy from an AI perspective, but there's a lot of advantages to doing it this way. So what we've done in our AI bot is we've we've actually done object identification object detection we have detected the status of our health by using the physical health bar and we've also done detection where we've detected the zone our characters in by using the Northshire Valley text up here the uh, text in the map so that is a, a method for object detection and that comes with a lot of advantages so this method you know of exactly knowing where the object is comes with a lot of advantages. So again, we've, these are the two that we've done. We've done our map text. That's an object on the screen, right? We've done the uh, health bar. So this is all knowing exactly where the pixels are and going right to those pixels. Now, the advantages are, number one, is it's fast. It's fast because it's consistent. That map thing is always going to be in that same spot. We don't need to use the whole image we know that that's where it's going to be. And this is the same as a person. When you're playing World of Warcraft, imagine if the map data changed to a different location randomly all the time. You would be struggling to find it too. But because you've learned that it's always in the exact same spot on the screen, wherever you know, you've know you customized your UI. And again, this applies to any game. Once you get used to the UI, the reason it's so comfortable is because you know exactly where it is. You don't think about, okay, where is the map? Oh, it's here. Okay, now I'm going to analyze it. That's not what you do. Your brain automatically just says, Boop, I'm going to slice out this little part of the screen because I know that that's what I want. And the, the second major advantage is that it's consistent. So we know that, again, in the, in the example of World of Warcraft, we know that the green health bar is always going to be green and it's always going to be the same type of green. So this is what I call kind of a pixel level object detection. And this is actually my preferred method most of the time because it's it, it comes with a lot of advantages that are important for what we're doing. It's got to be fast and it's got to be consistent. Now the downside is, is that it doesn't work for things that aren't consistent. So if I want to detect this wolf that you can see on the screen, that's not going to work. This method obviously will not work because the wolf isn't always going to be in this exact spot on my screen every time. So this is good for things that are static or things that are controlled. And a lot of games have a lot of elements like that, especially related to the GUI. It could even be puzzle pieces on a, on a board sometimes. Some games have puzzle pieces and whatnot. So this is a preferred method when it's going to work. This is a great method. So this is the pixel level uh, object detection. All right, so let me erase this. Let's look at the next level of object detection. And we're going to kind of increase in complexity here. So the next one is going to be, I'm going to call is template matching.
Okay. So template matching is um, something that I haven't covered on the channel since I've updated my channel. But if you go way back to my videos, when we did the fishing bobber, we did do template matching there. And the template we're looking for is the bobber, okay? So let me explain how template matching works. And we're gonna cover this, I'm gonna cover this in my updated tutorials, but let me explain how template matching works. Imagine I have a screen. And on that screen, I have lots of stuff. But I also have a template that looks like this. This is a template image. So I have an image and it says, I'm looking for this. Imagine we're playing Tetris and I'm looking for this blue block that looks like the shape L. And in my screen, I have lots of stuff. Maybe I have a square here. Maybe I have a circle here, you know, whatever. The point is, is that somewhere on the screen, I have something that doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's similar. And what's gonna happen is, we're gonna use an algorithm that's going to look at the entire screen. So it's gonna start here and it's gonna scan and then it's gonna to move to here and it's gonna scan. Imagine this is the computer, it's scanning and it's looking for pixels that match this template the closest. So what it's gonna do is the template starts here. Imagine this is an image. So the, the template starts here and it has all this data. So it's gonna, eventually it's gonna find this pixel and it's gonna compare this area here to this area here, and it's gonna say, boom, we've got a match, a certain, a, a certain closeness of match. That's called template matching. That's what we're gonna use OpenCV to do. Now, template matching is, is, is much better for things that, that I just mentioned. So for example, if we go back to this video here, if I wanna detect this wolf, template matching is maybe so-so. Now, the problem with template matching is, well, let's start with the advantages. The advantages are, I can find objects irrespective of the position on the screen. So I'm not limited to like my health bar where I know the health bar has got to be in the same spot, but it could be anywhere on the screen, but it's got to be kind of similar to the template. Now, things that will work excellent for the template, let's look at the screen. Can you think of anything that's going to work good with the template matching? I can. One thing that's going to work great for template matching is this enemy health bar. So if we're looking for red, health bars that that show our enemy's health, that's always gonna be a rectangle. So our template is gonna look something like this. It's gonna you know, maybe look like this with a, with a red health bar. That's our template, and somewhere on the screen we might have even more than one. There might be one here and one here, and the AI is gonna figure out, okay, that there's two enemy health bars on my screen, for example, because we can use template matching to do that. We're always gonna have the same shape. Now the reason it's not going to work for a wolf is because the wolf isn't always gonna be the same shape. Sometimes the wolf's gonna be standing perpendicular to us and it's gonna look you know, long. Sometimes it's gonna be close, it's gonna look really big. Sometimes it's gonna be looking straight at us, it's gonna look you know, smaller and thinner and it's just gonna be a face. So template matching is not gonna work well for that application, but it is gonna work well for things like this enemy health bar that can move around on the screen, but still fits a common paradigm. So that's template matching. And then, Let's go another step level, so we another level up. So we want to obviously detect cool stuff too. Let me erase all this. We want to detect more stuff than just you know fixed stuff, obviously. So let me go back to the video. So then another op, another thing that we can do is called machine learning. So you've probably heard of machine learning, and you may or may not be familiar with machine learning. But uh, let me. And this is getting more advanced. So basically what's gonna happen is, and we're not gonna go through this now, this is gonna to have to be a video, but we're gonna create a neural network, which you can see on the screen here. This neural network is, is going to take our pixel data and it's gonna make predictions based on that pixel data. And what this is gonna be useful for is, we are going to be able to detect objects on the screen with a certain amount of statistical you know, uh, you know, uh, likeliness of it being that object or some other object and we'll be able to identify what it is and where it is. So you can see here is an example, I'll, I'll play the video, where I'm running around and the game is able to figure out that that's a wolf, 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 and it doesn't matter how big it is, how close it is. And is it perfect? No, so if you watch this, there's gonna be some errors. So, so like right here, you can see somehow it flagged this number as a wolf, probably because the color is white. That indicates that the model's not perfect, but you know, it's it's reasonable. I mean, if you look at most of these items here, they're correct. 
there's a couple of artifacts, the, the number nine and also down here in the bottom left hand corner. But if I play that, you can see as the wolves move around, it's able to figure that out. Now the, the awesome part about this is, so this is called machine learning. So this is where we would use machine learning, which you've heard about probably in the news and stuff, machine learning. And you know, we're gonna use things like a neural network. Now these all sound super, super fancy, high tech. It, it is interesting stuff, but you know, basically at the end of the day, we're just talking about mathematical models here. So we're gonna, we're gonna use this technology to detect objects on the screen that we both don't know where they are. And we both don't, we also don't know what exactly it's going to look like. We have a concept, we can recognize it. So as a human, I know that this is a wolf, but I've never seen a wolf that looked exactly like that, exact that size, exact that shape, exact that color. I've never been exposed to that exact information, but yet I'm still able to detect it as a wolf. So for those applications, that's where we're gonna to wanna to use machine learning. Now the disadvantages, so that seems like all positives. Well shoot, why don't we use machine learning for everything? It's awesome, you know, we could detect everything you know, realistically that way. Well, the downside is, is that this requires the most computational, uh, you know, resources. So the downside to machine learning is, is it's basically two big downsides. So if I write my downsides here, one is the uh, resources, meaning our computational resources. So if everything is machine learning, it's gonna bog this thing down. And number two, it requires training. Oh, if I can spell. I'm not a good speller, guys. I'm not a good writer. So it requires training. So what I mean by that is this, I did not just download a computer that was able to detect wolves in World of Warcraft. I needed to train the model. I needed to actually provide information to the computer and then run a series of training routines, which we won't get into now, we'll talk about later. But that takes a lot of time. That can take a very long time, depending on the size of your data and what accuracy you're going for. So it's basically like you took a small child with zero information of the world and you just kept feeding them images over and over again and you're trying to teach them to identify wolves more correctly. So again, the downside is, is that it's very cool, but it's gonna take more of our resources. It's gonna make things slow, slow down for us potentially. And again, it's gonna require us to train and make a model. So if our model is not good, if we don't do a good job with the model, we're not gonna get re good results. So this is the most tricky, difficult to implement. But those are kind of the three levels of uh, things that we're gonna do. So, so far in this newer tutorial series, we've just looked at things at the pixel level. Uh, I've done tutorials on the other two. You can look at my older videos, but if you stick with this channel, you're gonna see more examples of all three of these uh, types of solutions. But again, keep in mind, we don't wanna just jump into machine learning for every single problem because that's not the right solution. We wanna use the right solution for the right type of problem. So I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned a little bit at a high level of how we're gonna go about and tackle different types of problems as we do bots for different types of games. So thanks. Remember to like this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I'd love for you to stick around and I will see you in another video. Have a great day.